And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this uh, Wednesday, October 12th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Demain. And many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Following a three-day counting process, the Cherokee Nation Election Commission has certified the results of the special election for Principal Chief. The official results show Bill John Baker of Tahlequah received nearly 54% of the votes and will become the next Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation. The official results, including all votes cast, show Baker received 10,703 votes to incumbent Chad Smith's 9,128 votes. Details for an inaugural ceremony to swear in Chief-elect Baker have not yet been specified. Baker is a Tahlequah businessman who has served multiple terms as a representative on the Cherokee Nation Tribal Council. He holds a degree in political science and history and education with minors in sociology and psychology. Baker and his wife Sherry have six children and nine grandchildren. South Dakota has received about $4 million in education grants this year to address the needs of Native American students. The Rapid City Journal reports that about $1.5 million was awarded this year to continue with the five-year College Access Challenge Grant. The state also received an annual $3.5 million grant for the Gaining Early Awareness and Readiness for Undergraduate Programs. The two state initiatives have similar goals, including increasing high graduation rates among Native American students and encouraging them to attend post-secondary programs. The Cherokee Nation is hosting the fourth annual Certified Indian-Owned Business Fair on Thursday, October 20th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Katusa at the Hard Rock Cafe and Casino. The fair helps businesses grow by putting Indian-owned suppliers in contact with buyers. Cherokee Nation Commerce Services hosts the Indian-owned business fair every year to provide a venue for small businesses owners to expand services into wider markets. The fair features prominent industrial uh, leaders such as Boeing, ConocoPhillips, State Farm Insurance, Tulsa Bridge, the Tulsa Housing Authority, Tulsa Transit, the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, Flintco Constructive Solutions, Redstone Construction, and the First Consul Casino Hotel. During the fair, there will also be workshops conducted covering information on Section 8A, historically underutilized business zones, women-owned businesses, social media, capability statements, and contracting. The business fair is free to attend and open to the public. For more information about that business fair, you want to contact Valerie Scraper at 918-453-5536 or email to uh, ValerieRoberts at Cherokee.org. Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs Larry Echo Hawk recently administered the oath, uh, the oath of office to James C. Redman at his inauguration as Haskell Indian Nation's university's sixth president. The ceremony took place on October 7th on the Haskell campus in Lawrence, Kansas, where Echo Hawk and Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, Director Keith Moore were joined by local dignitaries, tribal leaders, students, staff, faculty, and fellow regional academic community members. Quote, I'm pleased to be at Haskell to swear in James Redman as uh, Haskell Indian Nation's university's sixth president, Echo Hawk said. He understands that Haskell is a proud institution with a long history of serving Indian country. His leadership will ensure that Haskell continues to progress in its mission into the 21st century. Redman, an enrolled member of the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma, was an education specialist with the BIE who had served as Haskell's acting president in times of need. His appointment to the position became effective on July 3, 2011. The swearing-in ceremony was held at the start of the 2011 Haskell Homecoming Celebration. Twin Cities Public Television recently announced that on September 25th, the station was awarded an Upper Midwest Emmy for first speakers, restoring the Ojibwe language, a documentary funded through Minnesota's Legacy Amendment. First speakers follow a new generation of Ojibwe scholars and educators racing against time to save one of Minnesota's native languages. The language is lost, uh, excuse me, a language in the world is lost every 14 days. One of those endangered tongues is Minnesota's own Ojibwe language. Now a generation of educators are working with the remaining fluent speaking Ojibwe elders, hoping to pass the language on to the next generation. 
But can this language be saved? Told by Ojibwe elders, scholars, writers, historians, and teachers, this TPT original production is filled with hope for the future. As recent as World War II, the Ojibwe language was the language of everyday life for Anishinaabe and historically the language of the Great Lakes fur trade. Now this indigenous language from uh, where places like Bemidji, Bewabit, Bewabik, Sheboygan, Nibish, and Minomen receive their names is endangered. Antoine Truer, historian, author, and professor of Ojibwe at Bemidji State University and featured in First Speakers, Restoring the Ojibwe Language, estimates that there are fewer than 1,000 fluent Ojibwe speakers left in the United States, mostly older, and concentrated in small pockets in northern Minnesota with fewer than 100 speakers in Wisconsin, Michigan, and North Dakota combined. Truer is a part of a new generation of Ojibwe scholars and educators who are now racing against time to save the language and the well-being of their communities. Narrated by acclaimed Ojibwe writer Louise Erdrich, first speakers tells their contemporary and inspirational story. The U.S. Air Force said it has detonated the last known explosives on a former bombing range on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. The Rapid City Journal reports that contractors with the 28th Civil Engineering Squadron and Native American Engineering blew up the final four bombs known to exist on the 2,486-acre bombing range last week. The range dates to World War II when it was used to train uh, bomber pilots starting in 19. 19- 42. Unexploded munitions on the bombing range had uh, left the land dangerous to use. The Oglala Sioux Tribe signed an agreement with the 28th Bomb Wing at Ellsworth Air Force Base in 2008 to begin removing those explosives. The Berlin Area School District of Wisconsin says it won't appeal an order from the State Department of Public Instruction to drop the Indian nickname it used since 1939. District officials say that even though a Waukesha County judge ruled in favor of McQuanago High School keeping its Indian logo and nickname recently, there was no reason to believe the same ruling would apply to Berlin. Administrator Bob Edal says the district will work toward replacing its nickname by next September. The Oshkosh Northwestern says the community will be asked to make suggestions for a new name. And it's official. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker will be the target of a recall petition starting November 15th. And tribal supporters of of the recall, including members of the Ojibwe Reservation in northern Wisconsin, where the governor has attempted to push a jobs agenda that includes mining in the watershed of one of the world's largest bodies of wild rice, over the objection of the tribes, will be ripe for signing on to the petition. Walker's Republican Tea Party backers have basically said, bring it on. And that is going to be another roundup of uh, news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Miigwech for joining with us and Gigawabamin Minua. See you again.